Lord dropped in our heart a long time ago, and I left it alone, this passage. Uh, haven't dealt so much necessarily with this verse, but I was touching on a little bit last week, one night, and I just want to uh, massage it again tonight with your prayers. It's the 55th Psalm, and um, I always tell people uh, uh, my inclination is to say chapter, but somebody said we couldn't say chapter. But yet it's laid out just like any other book. But they say you can't say chapter with the psalm. So the 55th psalm. <laughs> Verse number 16. I just uh, want three words, ask for me. I just want to extrapolate those words from this verse. And I know you see it in your Bible and perhaps it's on the screen as well. I want us to read that, uh, those three words again. It's the 16th verse, the 55th Psalm. As for me. And this time, uh, I want us to, this time a third time, and let's read it uh, in unison, aloud, and let's all say it together. As for me. I'm enamored with this text and with this uh, particular psalm. The truth be told, I'm a, I'm a lover of the book of Psalms. Amen. And I love it because, uh, number one, it is the hymnal of Israel. And it's their songbook. And that's why we really don't say chapter, uh, because uh, each of these uh, entries into the Psalter are actually songs. It's Israel's book of praise. It's their hymnal. And uh, it was invoked and utilized whenever they would go to the temple as they worship God. Uh, these psalms would be pulled uh, down and they would be utilized as they worship God. They had singers who would actually sing these psalms, musicians who would actually play them. And... Uh, the truth is told even in the inscriptions, you can glean some sense of their musical value. Some of the wording actually is, uh, is old and uh, we don't even know all of them, but we understand uh, that many of them are indicators as to how uh, the psalms are to be sang and how the singers are to intone them. I have a, a group of Levitical singers who were named uh, called the Sons of Korah. Uh, but uh, there, as we know, there are many, many others who have had a part in the Psalter. Uh, but it is a hymnal. It is to be sang. Yeah. It's interesting, too, when you think about the Psalter, that the songs that are here, um, there's a variety of songs, a variety of emphasis. Many of the songs are joyous and ebullient and um, we oftentimes, at the outset of our service, we like to quote psalms like Psalms 100, 150 of psalms, all of them which are exalted and overflowing. But uh, uh, when you look into the psalms, not all of these songs are ebullient. Some are instructive. Some are uh, more Christocentric and they're prophetic because they point forward to uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When you read them, that trilogy that we talk about, uh, uh, the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th Psalm that deal uh, with the shepherd. Amen. You all know those Psalms, don't you? And each of them emphasize uh, various facets of, of uh, being a shepherd, and all of them point forward to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the good shepherd, and then uh, he's the uh, chief shepherd. Amen. All of those things uh, are resident there. The great shepherd, they're resident there in the Psalter. Then there are other uh, psalms where uh, really David is telling the Lord and to, to sick his enemies. To get them, 
Amen. They're, they're, they're praying songs. And some of them, we, uh, uh, I think the theologians call them uh, imprecatory prayers. Amen. Where you tell God, kill my enemies. <laughs> we can't do that no more. Amen. Uh, I was talking with one minister. He was trying to th thread the needle and find a way we could still, you know, pray that kind of prayer. But uh, I differed with him. I, the Lord told us to pray for our enemies. And when he said that, he didn't have in mind to kill them. But he had in mind to bless them. Didn't he say bless them that what? Persecutes you. Speak all manner of evil against you. Revile you. Amen. When you get saved, you can't pray like that. I wish I had some help yet. You can't pray like that no more. Amen. I remember they tell me uh, years ago that there was a man, and this was a true story. I don't know if him and his wife had went around that morning or not. And he got up and and he was praying, and he said, Lord, if my wife don't do right, he said, kill her, Lord, kill her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. What kind of drama played out before church. But I don't think you can pray for the Lord to kill your wife. Amen. But, but it's interesting. All of that was in the Psalter. You know, one thing I, I really like is that the Psalter has some other psalms. They're, they're what I call plaintive psalms. And in those psalms, uh, the psalmist, whoever it was, sometimes it was David. Sometimes we don't know who they are. You know, we tend to give all the psalms to David, but David didn't write all the psalms. Some of them were his songs, and then some, uh, we don't know who wrote them. They're just there. <laughs> But they're songs that express human experience. And David and whoever else, they were very transparent. And I love that about God. It, it, isn't it good to know you can be real with God? Yes. You don't have to, you know, put on a face and put on a mask. You can be authentic with him. Yes. Sometimes uh, we forget that uh, in our worship, in this age of modernity, especially the last 30, 40 years, uh, there was a new wave, probably even longer than that, the new wave, the beginning of the charismatics, and then prosperity preaching and health and wealth. And I'm not really even trying to bash them. Uh, they brought some good things to the table, but uh, I, 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 as anything within the, the realm of the church, usually when we crack things, we overdo it. And we go a little too far, and then we, we came into the, the age, what y'all call that music, CCM, and uh, uh, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> CCM music, and uh, what y'all call it? Huh? Contemporary. Contemporary gospel, and oh, yeah. yeah, and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it got a little lighter, and a little fluffier, a little more jazzy. That's okay, it's okay. Um, uh, but but, but when I, when I, it was good. It brought a, a nice element to the church. But what I sometimes would resent was was sometimes uh, when when the new music came on, they condemned the old music. And, and uh, I don't know if you heard that before. I, I never forget. I was in a service one time, and a uh, man uh, he was contemporary, and we had. You know, we had been churching for a little while, and when he got up with his group, he said, uh, he said, now you all have been here for a while, and you, uh, uh, you know, you've been carrying on, you've been praising God. He said, now, now we're going to worship. And I, I looked at him. I said, you got a lot of nerve. What you think I've been doing? <laughs> Last, I thought I was worshiping before you got up. I, I didn't know I needed to sing your song. Y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight. To be a worshiper, amen. I, uh, you, you, you do know that God pervades all genres. He's a spirit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And uh, uh, regardless of the genre, uh, uh, the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him. Got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And, uh, but, but the point I want to make is that sometimes the, the new emphasis was you know, just the, the fluff, the bluff, uh, 
uh, but you can't sing out of your experiences. I've even heard some condemn songs like Precious Lord, Take My Hand. They say that's a sad song. That's a, that's a pitiful song. Well, it may be pitiful, but since I've been serving the Lord, I've had some pitiful days. Every day ain't been happy for me. Amen. That may be for your neighbor. Check your neighbor out. They, you might be sitting next to that ever-ready bunny. Amen. Keep on banging. But I've, I've had some, day, some days that have banged me up pretty good. Amen. And when I was worshiping God, I didn't feel like shouting. I didn't feel like speaking in tongues. I didn't feel like running around the church. How many know God meets you where you are? Meet you yeah, wherever you're struggling, wherever you're battling. And so I appreciate those old songs. Precious Lord, take my hand. I'm still worshiping him. Sometime when I worship him, I pray to him. Lead me on. Let me stand. Why? Because I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm worn. Through the storm. Through the night. Lead me on to the light. Precious Lord, take my hand. Y'all better leave me alone. I'm going to quote the next verse. When my way grows dread. <laughs> Precious Lord, linger there. I, I'm making the point that, that all of this is worship. And I'm glad that we can express ourselves. The dancers were here tonight the, with their paint, the pantomime. Amen. This, it, 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 just be in the spirit and just understand that, that we are able to express our appreciation to God and express our feelings to God. Amen. When we go through uh, the worship process and, and so that the, the Psalms is like that. And this particular Psalm is a Psalm that emerges from uh, the experiences of a man. In this case, we can uh, rightfully locate this as a Davidic psalm. It's a psalm that, that uh, pulls up out of David's uh, experience with the Lord. And I, I ought to drop this on you. You really are not an authentic praiser unless you have experience. Because it is experience that gives essence to your praise. And, and to your worship. You, 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 when, you, when you haven't had experience, you're mostly making noise and mostly making sound. But, but it's experience that gives depth to your praise, depth to your worship. And you can tell that sometime. Amen. You know, you can appreciate a singer, but, but if you are connected with God, you can tell the difference in how folks sing a song. Some just singing the melody, but others are pulling from the depths of their soul. Can I get a witness in here? There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spiritual twang in their voice. Amen. Because they've taken a journey with God. Can I get a witness in here? Thank God for the journey. Thank God for the process. And then this psalm is a psalm about journey. It's a psalm about process. I don't have time to tell you the whole story. I'm not going to take you the long way and long route with David. We know David. We know his history. And, 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 and indeed, he did have a history. And I, I often remind people that, that you know, history uh, to a saint means his story. You'll get that in a minute. Amen. History to a saint means his story. Amen. His story. What do you mean his story? It's his story of how he worked in my life. Amen. Well, well somebody said, well, it's my experience. It's not his story. It's my story. No, 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 no. It's his story. Because whatever you got out of, he brought you out of. You didn't bring yourself out. Can I get a witness in here? You didn't deliver yourself. Who in here delivered themselves? You didn't have the power to deliver yourself. Oh, if we tell the whole truth, some of us didn't want to be delivered. But thank God for the Holy Ghost that shook us out of nonsense into some sense. Can I get a witness in here? Writer said, I was lost, but Jesus found me. Put his loving, loving arms around. He brought me into the fold. We didn't bring ourselves into the fold. Know ye not that it is the Lord that have what? made us and not who we 
ourselves. Who in this room besides me owes all their success to the law? Yeah. Amen. No glory goes to us. All the glory goes to him. Yeah. It's in him we live. Yeah. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our very being. Everybody, first time tonight, look at your neighbor and just point up to heaven and say, to him belongs all the glory to him. Now you said that because I asked you to say it. Now, everybody that meant it, tell your neighbor that one more time. Tell him to him belongs all the glory. What kind of glory? Glory for everything. Glory for everything. Glory for e whatever my life has become. He gets the glory. If I went to school, he gets the glory. I didn't get myself through school. He got me through. He blessed my mind to work. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. He gave me the money to pay the school bill. God gave me that house I live in. Amen. That's not my house. It's God's house. Oh, I wish I was in the right church. Amen. Matter of fact, I don't own no house. I don't own no car. Amen. I'm using God's car. I live in God's house. I work on God's job because the earth is the Lord's. Fullness thereof. The world and what? They, that second time, bother your neighbor. Tell your tell neighbor, I don't know why you're tripping tonight. You don't even own yourself. You belong to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old saints used to sing a song. You don't hear that uh, saying too much anymore. But anybody remember that old song, My Body Belongs to God. I beseech you therefore, brethren. <laughs> By the mercies of God, you present your body. Living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. This is what shall I render to God for all his benefits toward me. So I'll take the cup of salvation. Amen. I'll pay my vows now. Presence of all his people. He owns us. He owns us. We, we would act better if we would realize that we're under the ownership of God. We would live a better life. Can I get a witness? The reason people don't live right is because they think they belong to themselves. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to him. We used to sing a song, I live for him who died for me. He paid for us. And, and so this psalm here, as I move on uh, uh, very quickly, it reflects David and, and reflects his uh, journey, his process with God. We don't need to talk about uh, 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 him coming out the house of Jesse. You know all about that. God is the one uh, that, uh, that delineated him and went and found him uh, when he was overlooked by his father and by his brethren. Uh, it was God who found him. And it's good to know when you think about David's story uh, that God knows us even in anonymity. Amen. When we're hidden, he knows us. When nobody else knows us, he knows us. That's why, you know, nobody should ever uh, be a child of God and have low self-esteem. How can you have low self-esteem and know Jesus? Amen. Better yet, how can you have low self-esteem when you are known of Jesus? He knows every one of us. He calls us. If he calls the stars by name, he knows us by name. And sometimes we trip over the fact that other people don't acknowledge us and other people don't know us. But he knows you. And he knows, I don't know who I'm talking to. He told me to tell somebody, I know where you are right now. I know where, I, I know everything about you. I, I know your address. I know your social security number. Lord just told me to tell somebody, I know where your bank account is. And, Somebody catch that a little later. You should have caught that. He knows you. He said, I know how much money is in it. And he said, I know how much money you need. Somebody will catch it after a while. He knows all of he, I know your physical state. Others may not know, but I know your physical state. I, I know all about you. I made you. I 
charted out the course of your life. He said, that's how important you are to me. I have charted out the course of your life. I wish I had some Bible believers. The steps of a good man ordered by the Lord. And he, God was ordering your steps even when you was bad. Because he knew you'd get good after a while. And so he ordered you. I need somebody praying with me. He ordered. Look at your neighbor a third time and point at your feet and say, he ordered my steps. He ordered, ordered my steps. Oh, he ordered my steps. Took me around the traps and snares and pitfalls. When we're wicked, even my enemy and my foe came upon me to eat of my flesh. He ordered my steps and tripped up their steps. They stumbled. And they fell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, isn't that amazing about God? Uh, he is ordered. I'm telling somebody. He, he oh, I, your neighbor won't get this. Can you buy the neighbor a fourth time and tell him, tell him he, he even ordered my chaos. He even... He ordered my chaos. Hallelujah. What was out of order was God's order. And he said, sometime I had to take this order so I could get you into order. Matter of fact, matter of fact, don't forget, he works in, in those chaotic spaces. I, I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the story in the book of Genesis. Uh, 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 the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and and something happened. We don't have time to talk about that. Some people call it the, the gap theory. And, you know, you've heard some of those old theologians. They talk about it. They said something happened between verse 1 and verse 2 because, because whatever God made was good and very good. And you get to verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the earth is void. It's empty. <laughs> without form. And and the Bible says, and darkness was where? Upon the face of the deep. But how many know God works in dark spaces? God works, praise God. He works in those empty places. Oh, he told me to tell somebody tonight, don't worry because your life may seem empty right now. Don't worry. Amen, because, because darkness is everywhere. Because the Bible says after he, he pointed out the voidness of the earth and the fact that that there was darkness upon the face of the deep. He turns right around and says, but the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The Lord told me to tell somebody, I'm moving in your life right now. Oh, I wish somebody would, would declare it. Fifth time, look at a fresh neighbor and say, the Lord said, I'm moving in your life right now. And I'm in the dark. I can't see him. He said, because it's dark. He said, but I'm working in the dark. And when you look up, I'm going to speak over your darkness and say, let there be light. There shall be light. There shall be light. 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 He's getting ready to turn on the light for somebody. Getting ready to, to, to bring substance. To your deformity, substance to your depravity, substance to your brokenness. Hello, somebody. I, I feel a healing spirit in the house. I feel wholeness coming to somebody. I can't stay like it is. Who am I talking to tonight? I'm not gonna remain like it is. It's not gonna be like it is. The storm is passing over. But you gotta learn how to hang in there and work with God and. And, 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 and that, that was true with David, and we parallel David uh, 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 coming through that season of anonymity. And the Lord just want, I don't know why I'm here, just want me to tell somebody I'm working on something. I'm, I'm, I'm developing you. I don't know who came to church tonight. I don't know most of you personally, but I feel like the Lord has given me a personal message for you and told me to tell you tonight, I'm getting you together, getting your stuff together. I'm, I'm making you ready. I, and look like it just hit me. He told me to tell somebody it ain't too late either. It ain't too late. <laughs> Devil told you it's over, but, but, but in the world they say it ain't over till the fat lady sang. 
And God said it ain't over until my word that's out on you reports back to me. He said if I haven't heard the word that's out on you, then it's not over yet. Because, because God said, I know I spoke over your life. And he said, when I sent your word out, I told her, don't come back to me, boy. Don't come back to me until the mission has been accomplished. Don't, don't come back to me until every jot and tittle, amen, of the story of your life has been put in place. I, I, I feel like telling somebody tonight, everything that God said about you will be fulfilled. Every prayer, every prayer, I wish I had me a prayer. I need somebody, the sixth neighbor, turn and tell that fresh neighbor, tell them every prayer your grandmama prayed, it shall be fulfilled. Every prayer your mama spoke over you, it shall be fulfilled. Every prophetical utterance. I just gave somebody some good news, but they didn't catch it. What, 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 what you're trying to tell us, you can't die yet. I don't care how sick you are. I don't care how bad you feel. I don't care how ugly your situation is. You can't die because there's still a word out on you. Uh, I feel like speaking life, but tell somebody, tell somebody you got to live. Look at it. Matter of fact, tell everybody around you. Sand enthusiastically. Sand in the east sanctuary. Tell everybody. Point at them. Say you got to live. May as well sit on up, you got to live. May as well straighten your shoulders up, you got to live. It's not time to die. I shall not die, but live. I feel I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live. Lay your hand on your chest and talk to yourself now. Just say it a few times. You that want to die, take your hand on off your chest. But, but everybody, just lay your hand on your chest. Say, I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live. Y'all ain't saying it. I need y'all to talk like T.G. Jakes. I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live. In spite of the pain, I'm going to live. In spite of my hurt, I'm going to live. In spite of my struggle, I'm going to live. In spite of my battle, I'm going to live. In spite of what the agnostics have to say about me. I'm going to, in spite of my enemies, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. You may be seated. I'm getting ready to close. I don't have time to tell this story. I don't have time to tell this story. I don't have time. But God, 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 it was God who worked in David's life. It was God who took him through diverse situations. It was God that gave him the victory, amen, uh, on the battlefield and brought Goliath down. You know that story. We don't have to tell you that story. It was God that helped him with just a few stones to bring down a mighty giant yes. from the land of Philistia and carry the day and win the battle for all of Israel. It was God, ladies and gentlemen, that anointed him to, to be able to play, I think, the harp. He was gifted. He could play. He was anointed. He was anointed. You know, it's a difference between music players and anointed musicians. Can I get a witness in here? And, and God anointed him. And the, the, the difference is uh, 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 one music ministers to the flesh, but there's another music that ministers to the spirit. And then and, and David played the, the instrument and the Bible says that Saul who had been rejected and David was his replacement. The Bible says, you know, God positioned him. You know, you can be called but God does the positioning and, and you got to cooperate with God in the positioning. You don't you don't have to push yourself. All you got to do is stay in your anointing and stay under the, the unction of God. And David stayed under the unction of God. And, and whenever Saul, the Bible says, whenever that bad spirit came on Saul, amen, uh, David would play the harp. And, and that evil spirit would leave 
him alone. Let me tell everybody, if you better stay up in a worship environment. Amen. Because it's the worship environment that binds demonic powers. It's the worship. Can I get a witness in here? Am I in the book? He, he inhabits praises of his people. Some of y'all, I, I don't feel God. He ain't around because that, that, it's because you ain't praising him. You, you got to give God somewhere to live in your life. If you praise him, he'll be there. You praise him, he'll be around. He, if you praise him on your bad day, he'll be there. That's why, amen, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to preach to myself tonight. His praise shall be continually. Yeah, don't just bless him on good days, bless him on bad days. Praise him when you can't find him. But he said, if you praise me, I'll, I'll inhabit that praise and I'll, I'll be around you. But, but that praise binds demon powers. I'm going to leave that alone. It, it binds demon powers and some come under uh, the authority. Can I just say this real quick? Of, of demonic power because they fall into that class that they were in in the book of Romans. And uh, uh, you go back there and read it. Somewhere in Romans 1 it says because when they knew him as God. Amen. They glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful. And it says for this cause God turned them over. Amen. What would you do if I told you that if you praise him he'll keep the devil off your back? What, what would you do if I told you if you just praise God he'll make demons walk past your house and go to the house. What would you do if I told you if you just praise God he'll make that mean boss leave you alone on the job. Amen. They didn't glorify him and neither were they thankful and that's why they were in that fix and that's why they were in that mess but David worked with his anointing and because he was anointed and worshiped God he was able to bind the, uh, the demonic power that hovered over so I believe this is just my little theory amen it was God because David was a worshiper it was God that guided the javelin of Saul Y'all check that out in the scripture. You remember Saul was going to try to nail him to the wall. But because he was a praiser and because he was anointed and because there was destiny over his life, uh, the javelin missed him every time. I wonder, is there anybody in this room that the javelin missed? Anybody? Anybody in this room? Oh, they, oh, they set me up. They set me up and they were going to take me out. But the power of God Backed it away. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Hallelujah. Somebody just say, thank God for the blood. Thank, thank God. Thank God. Ah, thank God for the blood. I got to close. Uh, David, David had so much to, to thank God for. So many experiences in life. We don't have time to talk about. Amen. You know, uh, uh, some of his other encounters and circumstances and, and situations. But God blessed him on the battlefield and you know uh, he had situations we all got situations and things that that come up on us and uh, can i get a witness in here stuff happens sometimes sometimes it's their fault sometimes it's our fault we we don't always want to be honest you know you know and then and, and, and then david got in trouble he he was blessed so much and, and until he got lax blessed so much until you know he stayed home that leads up to this psalm and this dilemma he stayed home you remember that uh, finally saul got off the scene david got uh, uh placed on the throne and sometimes when you you get what you want from god Amen. That's the time you got to be on guard when, when God blesses you. That's when you got to be watchful. Amen. Especially when I get a blessing, I have my eyes open because I, I don't want to burst your bubble because I know uh, the devil is lurking around somewhere. Amen. Because uh, while blessings are a blessing, there can also be a deceptiveness. Work by the devil behind the blessing. And, and, and sometimes the devil will forget to, uh, will make you forget, amen, who the blessor is. You'll, you'll get so absorbed in the blessing that I forget, amen, to thank him who gave me the blessing. 
Always remember. That's what the old songwriter said. Always remember. Y'all remember that old hymn? Always do what? Keep him. Lord, help me to keep you on my mind. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your bride. When my way gets dark, keep me by thy side. When my faith gets weak, always let me see something in my life thou hast done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. I'm going to leave that alone. Never forget what you've done for me. And then you, but you can forget if you're not careful. You can get it wrapped up in luxury and plushness. You, you can forget. You got to watch COVID. You can forget. COVID can make you forget. You get used to sitting in the house and used to taking it easy. You can forget. Don't forget. And then the David forgot, and so he got lax. And that's how, you know, uh, uh, he got caught up in pride, numbered Israel. I don't have time to talk about that. Then he was home one night and went up on his porch looking over the kingdom and looked over yonder and saw, you know, his place was the highest place, I suppose. And so he looked down on another rooftop and saw this fine lady whose name was Bathsheba. Don't look at me funny. Amen. She was fine, y'all. Amen. Amen. He, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have fooled with her if she wasn't fine. Y'all don't want to see y'all want to be. He was a king. And as he caught his attention, y'all don't want to talk life. I see. Because he caught, caught his attention. He had dropped his guard. He had dropped his guard. He already had wives. He already had women. But you know, when you get carnal enough, it's never enough. And, and so he looked off over yonder and saw this beautiful damsel. Her name was Bathsheba. And uh, you know, the rest is history. Smuggled her into the palace and had his little tryst with her. And then he eased on back home and said, this thing is, oh, I'm the king. I can do whatever I want to do. Get away with it. And then here come a note from Bathsheba. I'm pregnant. And oh, my God. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be king. I'm, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm the king. I'm going to command her husband to come home. And, and he's going to come home. And he's going to come off the battlefield and go on up and, and be with his wife. And, and they ain't going to know the difference. Amen. Even if it looked like me, they gonna, ain't going to have the nerve. They ain't going to have the nerve to accuse the king. And, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. That they, uh, he, had it all, he had it all worked out in his mind. Amen. But 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 Uriah the Hittite, his servant was more noble than he was. And when he went home, he said, "I can't go, go in and enjoy my wife and and my comp compatriots are out on the battlefield." And so he sat on the porch all night long, sat at the door, never went in the house. And now David got a problem, and then and then one thing leads to another thing, and so he puts him back on the battlefield, sets up his murder. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? When the battle got hot, the rest of them withdrew himself. And sure enough, he died. And then he married Bathsheba. And, uh, and, and look at all of this, a big conundrum. Can I take a little time tonight? Big conundrum, big conundrum got going on. Amen. He married her. And, uh, and, and you know the story, God wouldn't let the child live. That, that was part of his judgment, the baby died and and there was a, a lot of palace intrigue going on and and then God still had to get David together you know there was something about David uh, and a lot of saints don't like to deal with this theologically in all of his mess amen yet there was something that that made him akin to God in all of his mess there was still something somebody helped explain it one day that attracted God to him in all of his mess and all did y'all hear what I said and all I'm trying to help the church you know it's strange we'll forgive David but won't forgive one another it's strange and it's strange it's strange we won't forgive the, the folk in the church David was a murderer and an adulterer and a liar and, the, and, and we shouting on his psalms right now but let somebody mess up in the church and we're through with them forever and we're, we're, we're whispering about I wish I could preach tonight I'm, I, can I preach anyhow how, everybody look at somebody and say how are you going to forgive David and not forgive me I, I, let me get past all his stuff 
Amen. But as soon as you find a new member join the church, you tell them all about my mess. And, uh, but, but the Bible says that uh, there was something in David. Uh, I'm not minimizing sin, but there was something in David. Well, the Bible says this. He was a man after. God's own heart. I, 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 I know it's hard to explain, but, 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 but I don't know. I don't know. Even in his failure, somehow he loved God. Even, yeah. even I, I can't get no help. I, 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 I wish there was somebody, somebody that would tell a neighbor, say, I, I haven't necessarily been everything I should have been. Say, but I always loved him. I, I, oh, you ought to, hey, I wish there was somebody. They can tell somebody, I never stopped loving Jesus. I, I may not have loved him like I should have loved him, but I never, I never stopped. I drifted, but I stayed in love with him. I may have fallen in the dust, but he was always on my mind. I was in the bar, but I couldn't forget him. I was in the street, but I, oh, I wish I could get a witness in here. He was a man after God's own heart. He, he, he worshiped God. He was a worshiper and he loved him. And, 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 and so there was always a, a tender spot. Do anybody know what I'm talking about? There was always, some of y'all backslid, but you always had a tender spot. That's why I'm back. Amen. There was always that tender spot. And, and David, well, the Bible says uh, <clears throat> he was carrying on and something in him was incomplete. He, he was in that bad condition. And sometimes somebody got to help you understand how dirty you are. Amen. Amen. You know you did a little dirt, but sometimes you don't know how dirty your dirt was. And, and so Nathan, the prophet, uh, came and confronted David and told him that parable about, you know, the man and the little ewe lamb. Y'all remember that story and, and how bad it was. He had everything and took the little ewe lamb from the poor man. And, and like all of us, we got a little hypocrisy and self-righteousness in us. And David said, why is he? Hey, man, I'll kill him right now. Hey, man. And, 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 and Nathan punched him and said, thou art the man. Oh. Oh, you know what the church needs? The church, the church needs, uh, amen, some good old-fashioned conviction sometimes. Yeah. Some of us, some of us need to, to go back, go back to, to that meeting because yeah. some of us can't have a David moment because we've never had, praise God, a Last Supper moment. Some of us have never had a Last Supper moment. And uh, Oh, can I say that again? Yeah. Some of us have never had a last supper moment. What's a last supper moment? Amen. Before you get to the communion, Jesus was sitting at the table and sopping bread. Y'all remember that? Oh, and yeah. the wine. And he, he looked and he said, one of you at this table will betray me. Yeah, they, they weren't like us. They weren't like us. Amen. They weren't like us. They kept on going. Amen. Every disciple said, Lord, is it I? Look. <laughs> Lord, is it I? You know, it's dangerous when you don't acknowledge the possibility of failure in yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. You look at your neighbor and you can tell. They're looking straight ahead. They don't want... Look, look, look. I'm serious. Look up and down your row. Amen. You're sitting next to, 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 to brother perfection and sister, sister excellent. Amen. No possibility. A failure in him. How, how can you say there's no possibility of failure in you when the Bible says, let him that thinketh he stand. Take heed lest he fall. Lord, is it I? Everybody ought to pray that every day. Lord, is it I? Amen. There might be something in me, amen, that I don't see. There might be something in me. How many know God knows you better than you know yourself? Amen. We need to get back to the old church. That's why I told you, you can't always sing these fluff and bluff songs. We still need to sing, search me, Lord. Shine your light from, from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, y'all ain't talking to me. Take it out. Strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. Y'all ain't even saying that. I, I, anybody want to be saved tonight? Raise both hands to heaven. You ain't got to say this to the neighbor. Say it to the Lord and say, I want to be right. 
I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Say it again. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Get it out of me. Get it out of me. Get it out of my mind. Get it out of my spirit. Get it over out of my flesh. I want to be saved. David. Apica. The Ekamosa. David. David. David had to write the psalm. And he was a man after God's own heart when he was convicted of his sin. He was able to write that psalm and tell God against the only have I sinned. Create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. And he was able to write later on, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Tell your neighbor he dropped the charges. Tell, oh y'all did. I thought somebody would get happy about that. I, 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 I just need the guilty to speak. Everybody else keep quiet, but the guilty. Tell your neighbor I was guilty, but he dropped the charge. I should have died, but he dropped the charge. I was on death row, but he dropped the charges. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it. Why is the all oh, the blood of Jesus? Oh. Trying to run off. Blood of Jesus. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you do, do your best not to mess up. Whatever. Whatever you do, say, do your best not to fall. Say, but but but, but if you fall, say, don't let the devil pull you all the way out. The blood of Jesus cleanse you up from all unrighteousness. He's an accuser of the brother. But when he accuses you, show him the blood. Show him the blood. Show him the blood. Don't you backslide? Show him the blood. Don't you walk out the church? Show him the blood. Tell him he paid the debt in full. He paid it in the past. He paid it in the present. Some of y'all can't handle it. He paid it in the future. The blood that Jesus shed for me, way back on Calvary. It shall never lose its power. Reaches the highest mountain. Flows to the lowest valley. The blood, the blood. I need some blood saints. Open your mouth and say the blood, the blood, the blood. Say it again. The blood, the blood, the blood. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. I got to Come on Sunday, trying to move on. I'm just thinking about all the stuff the blood covered for me. I'm trying to leave y'all alone. I'm thinking about, thinking about that blood. Wash my black sins away. Thinking about that blood. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, if I had time, I'd tell you the rest of this story if I had time. Can I have three minutes? I'd tell you everything that that I could fit into it if I had time. I'd tell you how, the, how David was forgiven by God but yet had to deal with the repercussions of his failure. That's why it's better not to fall but, but because he failed, he, he received his mercy but yet there were repercussions. I believe it bled over into his family. I believe it messed up his family. If I had time, I talked to you, praise God, about his sons and the disorder in his house uh, because they witnessed him uh, being disorderly and so it created a disorderly environment in his family life and, and his sons were disorderly. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Had a boy named Ammon. Y'all remember Ammon? And Ammon had a thing for his sister. What was her name? Was that, was that Tamar? I mean, Tamar, Tamar. He had a thing. Tamar was his half sister and, and Ammon went into a swoon for his sister. We have to be careful what we introduce into our family tree. And that's why God has to try to help us all to hold on to him and keep things out of our house and keep things out of our family. I gotta go back to that blood again. Lord, keep my soul from day to day under the blood. Lord, help me, help me so that stuff can't creep in. Help me. 
enemy can't build a, a platform in my house and, and work on my children. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, in, in this fallible flesh. Help me to hold it together. Help me. I feel like preaching here tonight. Help me to keep my focus. Help me. Order my steps. Order my steps, Lord, because I need you to cover my children and cover my grandchildren. Keep me from introducing generational curses into my, to my family tree. I need God to help me, but, but the Bible says that uh, this tragedy went down with David and Ammon got something in his spirit and, and he got this thing for his half-sister. Now incest has violated the home and, and, and before long he rapes his sister and, and now David, the Bible says David uh, doesn't check. I wish I had time tonight, David. I, I'll take my time if y'all tell me to take my time. Amen. Uh, David, 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 I feel better too. David, David, David uh, did not check Ammon. David didn't check him. David, why didn't he check him? Why didn't he check him? He did, why didn't he check him? He should have, really, he, he, he deserved the death penalty. He should have at least been chastened harshly. Possibly, he should have been put to death. But why didn't David chasten Ammon? I suspect it's because David had guilt on his conscience and look back at what he had done and I'm going to help you tonight you know parents you got to you got to overcome that you cuz there, there there are no perfect parents and y'all ain't going to like me tonight sometime your children will try to play a mind game with you you know because you made some mistakes but 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 you got to you got to bring that scripture back to the blood of Jesus cleanse of us from all unrighteousness. And now the blood and me are gonna cleanse you from yours. Don't, don't, let your, don't let your child back you up in a corner because you had a human moment. You are still the mama. You are still the daddy. Don't let the devil, amen, uh, cause you to abrogate your responsibility. I feel like talking to somebody tonight. Some of y'all done let your children back you up in a corner. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, take back control of your house. Tell your children, tell your children, I messed up. That's why I'm not going to let you mess up. I went wrong. I, I, I wish I had. Can I talk here tonight? You know, they don't need in being stuck on stupid. I love you too much to do the same dumb stuff I did. Amen. I'm going to beat it out of you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm going to pray it out of you. I'm going to shake it out of you. Get your, everybody tell somebody, get your home back. Get your home. Get your home. Get your home back. Get your home back. Quit letting your children play a guilt trip on you and a mind game on you. Step to them. Y'all done got quiet now. Step to them. You brought them in the world. Step to them. And say, I will not see you go to hell. The devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. I'm going to bind every demon around you. I'm going to speak to every spirit around you. I'm going to love you back into the church and back into the arms of God. And I'm getting ready to close. Uh, but uh, but uh, he got timid. And so Ammon ran amok. And because David wouldn't handle the business, here comes Absalom. And Absalom, he's out of order. And uh, he thinks he's good looking and cute. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Bible say he got bushy locks. Look around. You sit next to somebody. Think they cute tonight. Bushy locks of hair. And he was tall and debonair. And the Bible says when David didn't handle it, Absalom stepped in and handled it. Killed his brother. Look at it. The door got open. Generational curses. Amen. In adultery to incest. And now fratricide. Brothers killing brothers. The home now is messed up and out of order and David still didn't do nothing about it. Should have got the boy for killing his brother but David was too weak to get the boy for killing his brother. Maybe that's cause he killed Uriah. Amen. He didn't stand up. He didn't kill. He didn't straighten out Absalom and when he went unchecked the Bible says that Absalom really started feeling himself. Said my father's weak. I believe I'll take over now. Amen. He done lost his house. I may as well take the kingdom. 
and he sat in the gate of the city. I wish I had time tonight. Can I finish this? He sat in the gate of the city, courted the men of Israel. As they came into the city, he courted them. If I was king, if I was king, Absalom had a Jezebel spirit. Absalom had a controlling spirit. If I was king, if I was king, anybody know some folk like that? If I was over the usher board, if I was head of the choir, if I was chairman of the deacons, if I was the head musician, if I was the pastor, things would be different. Things would be different. He courted the men of Israel and now, amen, the, the, the army gathered to Absalom. A full-fledged rebellion was going on now in Israel and David was all by himself. He was isolated. In the royal city, he was isolated and everything was closing in on him. It got so tight until he had to pack his stuff up. And the Bible says he fled from Jerusalem. And I believe that's how he got this psalm. He was under siege. He fled from Jerusalem, went out there and, and held up in a cave because everything was closing in. There are seasons of life when everything seems to close in, when, when everything that can go bad does go bad. There are seasons of life when, when the enemy attacks you with a frontal attack and a side attack comes in from the backside. Everywhere you go, you remember that song, there's trouble. Everywhere you go, there's strife. That was David's situation. Absalom had disgraced his father, ran him out from the palace, ran him out into the wilderness, marched into the city, took over the royal palace, went in the palace, gathered up David's wives and gathered up David's concubines, took them up on the rooftop, slept with them one by one out in public, let everybody see him, humiliate his father, sleeping with your daddy's wife, sleeping with your daddy's concubines. What infamy, what ungodliness was going on now in Israel. And David was there by himself, hid up all alone in a cave. I'm getting ready to close now. All by himself. And that's where he wrote this psalm. Some of your best worship comes when you're in great trials. Some of your best praise comes when your soul is tormented. Some of your highest praise to God comes when you're being bombarded on every side. And so he wrote this psalm. said, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Have you ever had days when it looked like God was hiding himself? You ever had no seasons in life? You looked for God and couldn't find him, but he prayed a prayer and said, God, I need you to hear me. God, I need you to unveil yourself. I need to know that you're here. I know you're here in a strange and mysterious way. But now I need to see you clearly. He said, attend unto me and hear me. Sometime I need direct attention from God. I wish I was in the right church. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you ever been in a situation where you need direct attention from God. Pastor can't fix this for me. My mama can't fix it for me. The church mother can't fix it for me. I must tell Jesus I, I cannot bear. I wish I had me a praying church. These burdens alone I must tell Jesus. I, I look at somebody and say I must tell Jesus. Tell him, tell him I got a must tell Jesus situation. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone, I got to close here now. He said, I mourn in my complaint. I make a noise. There, there's some tests and trials that'll make you moan. There's some struggles, praise God, that'll make you make a noise. Uh, it'll be inaudible. There's some battles, thank God, that, that you can't intone and articulate with words. All you can do is mourn and make a complaint. Have you ever laid down at night and couldn't really go to sleep? Have you ever been down on a bed of affliction and, and all you could do is toss and turn and, and moan in your situation. He said fearfulness and trembling thank God have come upon me. He said horror have overwhelmed me. And here's 
thank God, uh, a, a, a word that pops out. He said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. He said, for then would I fly away and be at rest. He said, then would I wander far off and I would remain, thank God, in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape. Thank God from the windy storm and from the tempest. Somebody lift your hands and shout glory. glory. Shout glory another time. Glory. Look at your neighbor as I get ready to close tonight. Find you a fresh neighbor and say hey neighbor. Have you ever been in a place where you couldn't work it out? Say, have you ever been in a place uh, where you couldn't get it together? <laughs> have you ever been in a place uh, where it looked like you were losing your mind? <laughs> have you ever been in a place, uh, amen, where I thought uh, uh, TV uh, wrote a song and said things, uh, thank God, are falling apart. Uh, look at your neighbor. <laughs> You got to help me close tonight. Shift to another neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but there have been seasons in my life where everything fell apart. Say, but I'm so glad that I can report Jesus picked up the pieces. I can't get no help. Can I get some help tonight? <laughs> Look somewhere else and say it was the Lord that put me back together. <laughs> it was the Lord that rescued me from destruction. <laughs> it was the Lord <laughs> that kept me from falling into the abyss. <laughs> it was the Lord <laughs> that let, let me fall over the cliff. <laughs> I was sinking. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore. I hear David. He said everything that could go wrong, it has gone wrong. He said I don't know how I got in this situation. I know I did some bad. But I don't feel like I deserve this. I know I twisted some things, but I don't feel like I deserve this. But uh, trouble is everywhere. He said, My son turned his back on me. He said, My other son raped my daughter. He said, My family fell in the shadows. And he said they had insult to injury. My best friend turned his back on me. He said I could have handled it. They said, but it was not an enemy that reproached me. If it had been my enemy, I could have dealt with it. If it had been the one that I knew hated me, he said I could have worked it out. I could have hid myself from him. He said, but uh, I was betrayed by my best friend, Ahithophel. We went to church together. We prayed together. We fasted together. When you help me close and say, hey, neighbor, have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Have you ever had a dagger put in your back? Have you ever had enemies and haters on every side? If it could go wrong, it did go wrong. I got to close. I got to go to my seat. What do you do when it falls apart? Somebody help me close. Look behind you and say, what do you do when everything falls apart? Turn to your right and say, what do you do when hell breaks out in your life? Turn to your left and say, what do you do when your life is turned upside down? 
and inside out. Would you help me close and say, hey, neighbor, I don't know what you're going to do, but as for me, I'm going to call. I'm, I'm going to call. As for me, y'all ain't helping me close. As for me, I will call on the name of the Lord and the Lord shall save me I got to close tonight but I came to tell new life family life sinner help is on the way who am I talking to tonight when the enemy come in like a flood the Lord will lift up a standard get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready tap your body on the shoulder and say hey get ready help is on the way tap him on the shoulder again point up yonder and say there it is there's your help there's your miracle I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help my help come from the Lord many are the affliction of the righteous but the Lord the Lord delivereth them out of them all somebody Celebrate your help. Celebrate your miracle. Celebrate 